The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. Now last week I contrasted the difference between Herod's dinner party for the rich and powerful and Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. The miraculous feeding was a powerful expression of God's abundance and a direct response by Jesus to Herod's sinful dinner party which resulted in John the Baptist's immoral execution. Our reading today continues right after last week's reading. It tells us that in the evening after the feeding of the 5,000, that Jesus sent the disciples to the other side of the Sea of Galilee in a boat. Well, he dismissed the crowds and finally got some time alone to pray that he had come there for, back in verse 13 of this chapter. Now, if the first part of this chapter of the gospel contrasted Jesus' life-sustaining power to the corrupt power of the earthly rulers to cause death, then our reading today from this part of the chapter demonstrates Jesus' authority over the unpredictable and at time dangerous power of nature. It's one hardship and challenge after another for Jesus and the disciples because while Jesus and the disciples were separated, we are told that the disciples' boat had become perilously caught in a powerful storm on the lake during the night and that they had been unable to make shore. Now life's like that, isn't it? I've joked to some of you before that I had stopped saying to myself during COVID, it, it can't get worse than this, can it? Because life seemed to prove the contrary. Yet we endured and we proved our resilience and our strength as a community. Today, we can celebrate what good we helped accomplish in the response to that global health crisis. The caring ways that we found to reach out and support each other demonstrated that the Holy Spirit was at work through us in the midst of a time of great suffering and grief. We did what we could do, and we did it with the intention of being bearers of God's love and the good news. We grew in faith with every act of love and faithfulness. And we have begun the hard work of rebuilding our lives and our communities. Yet even now, as we seem to have weathered the biggest waves of the pandemic, we continue to face new troubles in the pandemic's wake. As we find ourselves facing ongoing global and national economic instability and the growing and growing international unrest and war. Now, I remind us that in the verses that we read and reflected on last week, which came just before today's reading, that Jesus has had had the disciples participate in the miraculous feeding by giving them the task of distributing the bread and fish. It is Jesus' goal that the disciples would participate more and more in the proclamation of the good news. In our reading today, as the disciples witness Jesus' miraculous walking on the water towards them in the storm, the disciple Peter asks Jesus if he can step out on the water and walk like he does. And Jesus invites him to. And Peter is able to do it even if just for a few steps. The faith of the disciples are clearly growing. The more and more they grow in faith and in their role in proclaiming the good news themselves in their lives. So it's important to know that in Matthew's Gospel, the disciples got caught in two storms on the Sea of Galilee with Jesus. And how the disciples responded to Jesus in these two separate events shows us how they are growing in faith. It gives us a gauge. You see, the first time caught in a storm was back in chapter 8. 
And Jesus was in the boat with them, but he was asleep until they woke him to the danger. After waking, he calmed the storm and saved them. The disciples' response showed us that they were still questioning who Jesus was. Because in chapter 8, after being saved from the storm, the disciples, we're told, were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? But here in chapter 14, after more time spent following and witnessing Jesus at work proclaiming the gospel, their response to Jesus saving them from the storm shows us how their faith had grown. This time they responded by stating, truly, you are the Son of God. Just like Peter's small faithful steps on the water, our growing faith helps us take steps, even small ones, to exercise and grow stronger in our faith. Each of us has had a growing number of encounters with God at work in our lives, through our lives, which help us to grow stronger in our faith in God and Jesus Christ. We, too, are witnesses like the disciples to God at work. And like the disciples, we are given strength to be more trusting and faithful, to live following in Jesus' way to step out of the security of the boat and to take even a few steps outside our spiritual comfort zone and to act with even greater compassion and love in our relationships with God and with each other. Like Peter, our confidence might leave us, but God will be there to save us when we call out. Our faith grows when we take the risk of showing our love and allowing ourselves to act out of compassion a compassion that we often dare not risk showing in our broken world. I would now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your disciples to follow the way of the cross by their words and works of love. Today, we pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Chris, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we continue to pray for the parishes in the London Deanery for their clergy and people. Make your church a place of welcome and empathy for all people. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You satisfy the needs of all your creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster so, so that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayers. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. In our own Parish, this week we pray especially for Shirley, Jim, Elizabeth, Jocelyn, Kathy, Odile, Kylie, Eric, Denise, Edith, Doreen, Betty, Lena, Elaine, Karen, Brian, Barb, Alex, Vicki, Evelyn, Eva, Miriam, Max, Annette, and Mary Rose. We also pray for all those in our parish experiencing continuing long-term health concerns. And we pray especially today for Edgar and Janice, for Amy, Norma, Charlotte, Roy Ann, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Florence, Joyce, Charlene, Brandy, and Bud. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid 
Tend to those who are ill and be with all who suffer. Merciful God, receive our prayers. We pray for our parish of St. Mark's and our community. This week, we pray for our monthly drive through food drive collection. Even as the church struggles with its own provisions, help our food drive committee continue its work in helping to support food, supply food for those who lack this basic need in our community. We also pray for St. Mark's Rock Solid Youth Group. Please remember Brianna, Nevada, Liam, and Jody who are attending the Canadian Lutheran Anglican Youth Gathering in Waterloo. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits, and the spirits of your people, and give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Generations, bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praised in this place. Today, we give thanks for the life and witness of Helen Curtis, and we pray for the repose of her soul. We pray for Jane and Ralph's story and all their extended family during their time of grief. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. The miraculous feeding was a powerful expression of God's abundance and a direct response by Jesus to Herod's sinful din dinner fart 